In the early 1900s, there were half a million rhinos in Asia and Africa. But following a century of poaching and habitat destruction, their population has plummeted. There are fewer than 30,000 of the animals left in the wild, and three out of the five remaining rhino species are listed as critically endangered. The market for ground-up rhino horn, which many consumers wrongly believe to have medicinal qualities, has put them at such risk. But conservationists are at work on an inventive new strategy in a bid to save these giant mammals from extinction. So the number one factor threatening rhinos today is unquestionably poaching for their horns. And, and, and this is simply because rhino horn sells for so much money in Asia. Matt Kaplan is a science correspondent for The Economist. People believe that rhino horn consumed properly will make you horny. There are other medicinal properties associated with it, and people are willing to pay enormous sums of money for the substance. Got a sense right offhand what the going rate for rhino horn is? It depends upon the species, but for white rhino, you can get about sixty to $65,000 per kilogram. And when you think about that, a uh, white rhino can produce a horn pretty reasonably of three to four kilos. So you're talking about upwards of two hundred and twenty to two hundred and sixty thousand dollars for killing one rhino and, and running off with its horn. So I've heard that one way to get around this is simply to to remove the rhino's horns, which you know makes them safe from poaching because there's no value left in the animal. Is is there is there more that can be done? Right. So a lot a lot of folks have suggested that one thing you can do is remove the rhino's horns so that there's nothing to go and grab. Yes. Uh, but a, an easier and possibly better tactic would be to ruin the market for rhino horns entirely by flooding the market with rhino horns that are may, are fakes that people can't discern from the real thing and selling those on the market and thereby dropping the demand because everyone can have their own rhino horn and it's all produced in a lab. Right, so you mean uh, casting them in some sort of plastic? I mean, what, what, what does a fake rhino horn look like? A fake rhino horn, in this case, uh, as Fritz Vol- Volrath at University of Oxford has pushed with, um, Fritz uh, looked at the nearest relatives of rhinos. Now, rhino horn, as you may or may not know, is not actually a horn at all. It's hair, uh, like your fingernails, uh, growing out of the animal's head. And uh, rhinos are closely related to tapirs and to horses, Tapir is not so easy to go and collect, but horses are certainly uh, abundant. They, they collected hair from the tails of horses and chemically treated it to strip off just the few things that don't look very rhino-ish. Turns out horse hair has a, a layer on it that rhino hair does not. And then they bound them together and were able to create in a, a kiln a type of horn that once polished down is utterly indistinguishable from the real thing. Utterly indistinguishable. Extraordinarily difficult to tell apart. So, it, yes, it can be told apart with the DNA test. If you were to strip the, the horn apart and run it through a DNA tester, it would show you that it came from a horse rather than a rhino. But the thing is, the folks who are selling this stuff, they're selling it in the back rooms of stores, and DNA detection equipment is not readily available. And so now this team has a, a, a good fake, a great fake in hand. How to, to get it into the market to, to have the, the intended market effect? Yeah, and now, now there's the really difficult part because anyone who's going to try to peddle this into the market, either someone would have to give it to a poacher. I, I mean, the poacher's going to know they didn't kill the rhino. So if you gave this to a poacher and said, hey, you can hand this off to a fence and make one hundred and sixty or $260,000 by selling it, that poacher is putting their life in danger because if anyone finds out that it's a fake, the criminal world that's responsible for collecting the horns and then selling them would be very, very angry, and it would probably have life-threatening consequences. So this is certainly not a task for a research team at Oxford. This is a task for governments to be able to get the false rhino horns to folks who could then weave their way clandestinely into the trade network and start pushing the false rhino horns without anyone at the other end realizing what was actually happening. And that is that is both the most dangerous and the most difficult part of this. And so essentially uh, government actors, what, what, spy types, will try to sort of sneak these into the market. I mean, is, is, there, a, is there a precedent for this? Yeah, so there is a history to this, um, not with rhino horns and not with animal parts at all, But during World War II, there was an attempt by the Germans 
uh, under the Nazi regime to try to flood, I believe it was Britain, with enormous amounts of counterfeit currency to try to plunge the pound, uh, not plunge the pound, but to deflate the pound so that it was worth next to nothing and ruin the British economy. So the tactic by the Nazis didn't work. We don't know if this will work with the rhinos. Certainly, it's a supply and demand situation. And because rhino horns are so damn difficult for people to collect because the poachers are putting their necks on the line to go and get this stuff, if you were to start to increase the presence of rhino horn, uh, more people would be able to get to it. There would be uh, more supply and demand would, in theory, go down. Now, the catch here is it is possible that once rhino horn starts becoming more available, perhaps more people will say, well, hey, I want some. And it might increase demand. And that would be problematic. Of course, you could just start ramping up your your production of false rhino horn. But again, that takes us into territory we haven't explored yet. We don't know if that would work. But think about it this way. The Asian rhinos are in the hundreds. In some species, it's less than 100. Every single rhino that gets shot and has its horn taken away is that much less genetic diversity that we have to help us climb back out of this hole that we've got ourselves into. We need as much genetic diversity as is as is possible. And if this tactic can even save 50 rhinos during the course of a couple of years, that is, a, uh, that is something that is worth doing. Matt, thank you very much for joining us. It was my pleasure, Jason.